For a year now, the Webb Telescope has been capturing the most incredible cosmic images we've ever seen, and we are only getting started. Joining us now, Cornell astrophysicist Nicole Lewis, who has been part of the Webb team. Nicole, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Uh, we talked a year ago when the first Webb images were coming out. Uh, what has that year been like as we seem to be getting one image better than the, the next one? I mean, they're one right after another. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, I have to say those first images still hold a very fond spot in my heart. That was the first time we were able to say, hey, this telescope's working and it's actually working better than we could have ever imagined. Um, but the last year has been a little bit for us like drinking from a fire hose. There's just, <laughs> you know, observation upon observation and we're constantly trying to scramble to figure out what it all means. <laughs> well, that, you bring up a good point. So the images are amazing to look at, you know, for us lay people. But as, as a scientist, I mean, what impresses you most um, if you're not drowning from that, uh, that fire hose there? I mean, like, what are you starting to learn from these images? Yeah, I think it's important to keep in mind that when we see these really beautiful images from JWST, that in fact, they don't come down from the telescope looking like that. Um, again, this telescope looks at light at what we call infrared wavelengths. So, you know, the same wavelengths of light that we would use to uh, look at people with heat vision goggles. Hmm. And so when those observations come down, we usually get them as multiple black and white images that tell us something about the object that we're looking at. And then we can combine those into uh, make a, what we call a false color image that uh, most people see out there. But those different colors mean something different to every one of us scientists. It tells uh, us something about what those objects are made of actually. Ah, I see, okay, good explanation. Um, what, what does it mean though to us, all me, our viewers? Um, why yeah. is this information that you professionals, you scientists are getting, like why does it matter to us beyond that they're pretty cool, fun pictures to look at? Yeah, so JWST was designed and built and is now operated to answer some of the great outstanding questions of humanity, including how did we get here? So how did you know the whole universe evolve and how did Earth come to be? And then of course, are we alone in the universe? And so I, I think most people are interested in trying to understand those questions. Um, and each observation that we make is really pitched towards answering part of those very large questions. Almost seems for, uh, I, I, it almost seems hard to comprehend just how how far these images are coming from. We think our solar system is deep and far and wide, but I mean, these go well beyond that. Is there a way to even put that into some sort of perspective? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's difficult, but we often look at things that are what we call light years away, and we measure distance in light years, which is the you know, basically how much distance that light can travel in a year, and light is moving very, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I think it's important to keep in mind that when we look at an object um, that's say 11 light years away, we're actually looking at light from that object that was emitted 11 years ago. So the interesting thing about our observations is that it's not only distance, but time that we're peering across. How much, um, that, that's really, again, fascinating to just comprehend how, how big and wide it is. Um, how, in, how much information, how much science can be pulled from each image? Is, I don't wanna say it's, it's endless, but is it close to endless? Again, you said different scientists will look at different parts of these. Yeah, um, usually we work as a big team and we're looking at sort of how do we combine the observations that we have to tell us more about whatever object we're trying to study, whether it's, you know, a nearby planet or a distant galaxy. I, I think the other thing to keep in mind is that all of these observations and images are archived um, so that they can be studied by, you know, future generations. And this is something that uh, a lot of scientists have done, especially with uh, observations taken with the Hubble Space Telescope, which everyone's very familiar with those famous images as well. Well, um, so uh, last one for you, kind of bring it home uh, with this. Uh, how far can we go? What does year two look like? Obviously, this we hope the web will be around for a, a long time. The images certainly will. But uh, how, how safe is it to say we're, we're kind of just scratching the surface of the, what the web can tell us? Oh, most definitely. The first year was really for us to learn how to operate the telescope. Mm. Um, and so we were busy trying to, you know, push it to its limits. You know, you want to take it out for a good test drive, mm -hmm. but also to just pluck a lot of the low hanging fruit, things that we knew would readily yield science very quickly um, based on, you know, we've looked at the object in different, with different telescopes, et cetera. And so year two is, is focused more on sort of what I would call revving the engine of JWST. We're ready to sort of take it out and see what it can do. Love it, Nicole Lewis, Astro physicist Cornell University talking about the Webb Telescope. Thanks for joining us again. We'll catch up soon. Thank you.
those RPMs up on the old web telescope. We're going to do that, too, because we have more local news coming your way tonight at 6 o'clock. An update many drivers, speaking of revving up, have been waiting for I-81 